Hi guys, it's Kara, and the month of January is almost over, and I had promised to do a video where I actually showed you guys my face instead of my hands, so I figured I needed to get it done. I have been kind of postponing it. I've actually done it a few times and not liked it and deleted it, and this time I decided I'm just not going to worry about it. I'm going to answer your questions and post the videos and go from there. I am going to kind of break this into two videos instead of one long one. They'll be under 15 minutes, I'm hoping and kind of grouped into two categories. You guys left some really awesome questions for me. Most of them were either about me and living in Alaska or about like crafty questions, things about my YouTube channel. So this first video is going to be answering the questions you guys had about me. And I'm gonna kind of lump some of them together. I may um, occasionally mention someone by name, but I'm kind of just gonna roll them all into some similar questions, okay? And if you guys see me looking down, then just know it's because I have all of the questions in my Midori and it's sitting on the desk in front of me. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. A few of you had some questions about just me and kind of how I got to Alaska, where I was raised, how many kids I have, all that good stuff. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of background information and I'm going to apologize in advance because I'm not 100% sure what's gonna come out of my mouth. I'm not totally comfortable doing these kind of videos. This is the first one I've done. So just kind of keep that in mind as you're watching. So I was born and raised in Arizona in the Phoenix Glendale area, for those of you who are familiar with that part of the state. I lived in that area until I was almost 18 and then I went to college at the University of Arizona in Tucson. And when I was in my sophomore year, that's where I met my husband, who is from Alaska, which is where we currently live. I had no intentions of living in Arizona if I could move someplace else. I was just kind of tired of the heat and just the big city feel of it. So when we had our first child, when I was about 21, uh, we decided to move up to Alaska. And that's what we did in 1992 when my oldest was about a year and a half. I have two children. Um, the one that I just mentioned is my son, who is now 23. And I have a daughter who's 19. And we had her up in Alaska. We've lived here ever since 1992, primarily in the Anchorage area. I am now 46 years old. And if you guys have been watching my videos, you know that my oldest lives in Seattle and my youngest just moved out a few months ago and lives in Anchorage. So we are officially empty nesters. And that was actually a question I got from Crafty Irina was uh, how it feels to be an empty nester and how I'm adjusting. And that's kind of a weird question for me because I don't know how to describe it exactly. I know that when our kids were younger and going through different kind of stages where they were difficult or had done something, you know, particularly rotten, we used to comment about how great it would be when the kids moved out and it was just us. And I can remember thinking at one point, you know, when Cassie turned 18, I would only be 45. And now here I am, it's a year after that, and it's just Tom and I, my husband, Tom, and it's really strange. Um, it kind of changes your whole life. You don't have to, I mean, there's not, it's not all bad. You shop differently, you know, you're only buying for the two of you. You don't have to worry about what kids like kid likes this and what kid likes that. You don't have to worry about picking them up or taking them anywhere or anything like that. But it's just kind of strange. You know, when you've had kids around and in your life for twenty one some years. I think my, my son moved out a couple years ago, maybe three at this point. So we have had kids in our lives in the home for twenty some years when they're suddenly gone and it's back to just you and your partner or spouse, it's hard to remember what that was like. And it's just really kind of strange. Um, I like part of it. I like being able to kind of come and go and not have to worry about that. But it's also a little sad at the same time. Um, for any of you who are empty nesters, if you have any suggestions for me or want to comment, that would be great. If you can offer any advice, I would love to hear it. A lot of you had questions about Alaska and I have to say I'm not necessarily the best person because I think I've just lived here so long I take a lot of it for granted. Um, but I'll tell you a little bit. Um, some of you, one of you has um, some sons that are going to be moving here, Tango Sioux, and others just had some general curiosity. So um, 
it's a very unique place to live, completely different from Arizona, of course. Um, I love the location that we live in, the trees and the mountains and all of that. It's beautiful here. It's especially gorgeous, you know, when we have fresh fall and snow or in the summertime when it's a gorgeous sunny day. And um, it's just a beautiful place to be. And I would highly recommend anybody who's interested to come visit and check it out because it's absolutely great. It's really great for those of you who are uh, outdoorsy people. There's a ton of things that people do, both in the warm weather and in the winter. You know, in the winter time, there's a lot of skiing and snow machining and things like that. And in the summer, of course, there's all the normal outdoorsy activities. And there's a big part of the population here that likes to hunt and fish. Um, there's a lot of people who, uh, you know, they hunt for the majority of their meat to be used in the wintertime. We have moose and caribou and a variety of other animals, along with salmon and halibut um, fishing that happens quite a bit. So that's a big part of the um, life here. Um, my husband has done that a little bit. His parents, who also live here um, a couple hours away, um, also hunt and fish quite a bit, so we have a lot of that, um, you know, we get a lot of that kind of meat and that kind of thing. Um, and I know for those of you that don't like to hunt or, you know, think it's not, you know, something you should do, um, that might be something that bothers you, but I will say that, you know, the majority of the people up here hunt and don't do it for just sport, not just for the trophy, they do it for um, the meat and for food and to help their families get through the winter, that kind of thing. Um, because it's actually, depending on what you do with the meat, it's a lot cheaper to process it yourself than buy it at the store. Um, up here in Alaska, perishable items are a lot more expensive than they are in the lower 48. That's what we call the rest of um, the United States, the continental U.S., the lower 48. Um, because things are more expensive because they have to be flown up here. So perishable items are more expensive. So for example, um, last weekend when I was at the grocery store, uh, grapes, green grapes were four seventy nine dollars a pound. Um, and of course things are more expensive in the winter than they are in the summer, but just keep that in mind. I know when I moved up here, I was amazed because in Arizona produce is really cheap when I lived there and you can buy lettuce like 69, 79 cents a pound or for a head of lettuce, and up here it's sold by the pound, so things are just a little bit more pricey. The flip side of that is that um, we get paid typically a little bit more to live here, it's a higher wage, and a lot of the things in the economy that are um, an issue in the lower 48, like when the economy went really bad and people were losing jobs and homes, we're not typically as hard hit up here. Um, because of our location and because of our own economy with what with the oil and all of that. Um, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of information about Alaska. If you have more specific questions, leave them down below and I'd be happy to do another video or just respond to your comments. Um, I had a few people who asked me about how I managed to work and craft and if I did it, you know, always worked full time. Um, and I have pretty much always worked full time. I went back to work with my oldest when he was six weeks old and when I had my youngest about almost five years later uh, I stayed home for about eight months and that was pretty difficult for me I'm not I mean I kinda grump and groan like everybody else about getting up and going to work but I don't think I was made to be a stay-at-home mom at least not a full-time stay-at-home mom I think people who can do that and have the patience and the personality whatever you want to call it to do that are awesome that is not me. Um, I need to have a little bit of outside um, contact. And so when my youngest was about eight months, I went back to work part-time and that rapidly developed back into full-time and I've worked full-time ever since. Um, when the kids were young, I worked in the childcare industry, first in classrooms and then managing child care centers. So it was um, kind of the best situation because I could bring my child to the daycare and I could see both of them on and off all day. And then once they were in school, of age to be in school, I switched and started working um, in a government job and have done that ever since. Uh, as far as my crafty life is concerned, um, I 
when the kids were younger, I didn't do a lot of the crafting you guys see me do now in my YouTube videos. I did things that were more like home decor type things. Like, um, I made a picket fence shelf for my daughter to go with the scene that I'd painted on the wall for her. I did things like painted candlesticks and Christmas tree decorations and those kind of things. And then when the kids got a little bit older and they started, you know, having their own friends and not wanting to spend as much time with me and my husband, I kind of started with scrapbooking and I did that for a little while, but that very quickly moved into card making and then into everything else that you guys have seen me do. And I'll talk about that in a little bit more detail in the next video when I talk about um, my crafty life and answer those questions. So let me just look really quick and see if I answered all of your questions about Alaska. Um, just a few random things. Um, Christina Crafty Paws asked about my dogs. I'm assuming because I have one of them as the avatar on my YouTube channel. And um, I get a few comments every once in a while about them. And unfortunately, I have to say that um, we, within the last year, had to put both of our Cocker Spaniels down. We had two, bl the black one that you see, who's Gracie, and Sophie, who was a black and white Cocker Spaniel, Sophie and Gracie. We'd had them for 13 years. And unfortunately, they both had separate medical issues. And kind of within about five months of each other, both just kind of got really sick and were suffering. And so we had to make the decision as a family to put them down. And it was really hard. Um, you can see I'm already starting to get upset. They were around for a long time when my kids were little. And we miss them quite a bit still. Um, but I appreciate you asking because it's an awesome picture of Gracie. And she was a cool dog. Um, so let me just double check. A few people asked me if um, I'd want to live anywhere else. And... If so, where? And I, I really don't know if I want to live anywhere else full time, but it'd be nice to be kind of in the lower 48 where you can drive around and visit people a little bit more easily. Here, we have to spend the money to fly or we have to drive for a really long time through Canada to get to everybody else. So that's kind of my answer there. Um, Angie, in addition to asking me some other questions that I've already kind of answered, asked if I had any grandkids, and no, I don't, not yet. Um, I kind of still feel like I'm a little too young to be a grandma, although I know it could happen at any time. My kids are both old enough to have kids, um, but I'm hoping they wait just a little while. Not that I don't want to be a grandma, but I'd like to be a little bit older before that happens, give them, both my kids, time to be a little bit more grown up. I'm sure all you moms and dads out there would understand that. Um, Sue asked about the weather here. What's the worst weather I've been in? Um, I've not really been like stranded or anything like that, but we get some really cold weather in typically in December, January, where it's like negative something. And that's pretty painful to be in depending on how long you're outside. Um, other than that, every once in a while we get a lot of snow. A couple winters ago, we had over 130 inches in a winter. It broke records. So that was a big one. Um, but that's about the only thing um, that's kind of notable. A lot of times, honestly, like right now, um, the East Coast is having worse weather than we are. So um, we're pretty lucky that way. Uh, the population in the area that I live in, which is Anchorage, is about a little under 300,000 for you, Sue. You also asked that. And um, oh, I don't process my own foods. It's not my thing. But there are people here that do a lot of that. They can their own foods. And of course, like I said, they hunt and they fish. And then lastly, Sue asked what my favorite toy was and what was the toy that I wanted and never got. Um, I was a total Barbie girl, and I don't really recall not getting something I really wanted, although my mom was a waitress and was the only parent that I had that worked. Um, she always made sure that I had everything I needed. So that should answer most of those questions, and I will pick up the rest of them in the next video. So hopefully you guys will watch that, and um, thanks for leaving the questions. Bye, guys.